Unless you've been living under a rock, a lot of you guys will be aware of the situation regarding Chelsea and the ownership of Roman Abramovich. It's looking like he's going to have to sell the club and the club is going through a series of sanctions currently and it's kind of hard to know what the landscape of Chelsea Football Club is going to look like in a few months, in a few years and how different it's going to be to how it's been over the last few years. We of course know Chelsea as one of the top teams in England, always competing for trophies. We don't know now if that's going to be the case down the line. Are they going to be financially backed or not by a new ownership? Are they going to be run completely differently? At this stage, no one is really sure and we're not going to be making any specific predictions about what's going to happen. But we thought with the situation going on right now, it would be quite fun to try a video where we see what Chelsea could look like a few years down the line if they weren't allowed to spend any money. And then we thought we'd take that a little bit further and say, well, what if Chelsea could only use academy players or something for five years? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to remove every player from Chelsea's team. We're going to use academy grown players who are currently at the club and more that come through in the development center to see if we can keep Chelsea at a high level and see how well they'll do over five years. So it's a bit of a rebuild video with a bit of a twist because of the whole sanction situation that is happening with Chelsea. But don't get me wrong, I don't think the sanctions are going to lead to Chelsea actually having to use only academy players and never sign a player again. That's of course not going to happen. But at least you can see where we're coming from with the context of this video. Before we get into it though, I'd like to ask you guys if you could be absolute legends and smash the like button. We greatly appreciate it. This again is something a little bit different. You might notice we're trying a few different things on the channel at the minute and we're seeing how you guys respond to it. So let us know if these rebuild style videos with a bit of a twist are the kind of things you'd like to see. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and feel free to check out my channel linked in the description where we have similar rebuilds going on, not with Chelsea, but we've done them with other clubs in the past and there's going to be more to come in the future. So if you enjoy this kind of thing, I've done it before on there, you can check it out on my channel as well. But here we go with the video and the first thing to do will be to remove all of these players that aren't homegrown at the club, academy prospects, the likes of Jorginho and Aspilicueta who we can see here will need to be removed. So let's do that first. So as you can see, we've removed every player from Chelsea, assigning them a random team with a bit of value. I tried to keep it semi-realistic, but on some of them, I just gave up and also Ben Chilwell accidentally sent him to Man City and I thought, you know what, that's only going to make them even stronger. So for the sake of the rebuild, I bought him back and sent him out to Barcelona instead. Chilwell and Lukaku, despite being trained in England, don't have Chelsea as the team that they were trained at. So we're not using them in this simulation. Christensen, even though technically his contract is running out in real life, We've extended it here using the editor. Let's be real, we've got rid of everyone here. You can give us a bit of leeway with that. And we've brought all the players that were on loan back to the team for this season using the editor as well. I've also made it so that I can't be sacked for this rebuild because I think the board aren't going to be too happy with the decisions that we're going to be making. But who knows, maybe the new imaginary ownership has decided, you know what, we're only going to use homegrown prospects from now on. Now that has changed the landscape of our side by a big big margin as you can see our star ratings are set here for the players who are left at the club if you don't know star ratings are compared to other players at the club so the fact that we're now missing your big hitters in Kante, Lukaku, Jorginho would have had high current ability ratings the players that weren't at that level yet are now classed as our best players by a long distance I am a Chelsea fan and I would actually argue that these two Reese James and Mason Mount are probably two of the best players at the club anyway and I think a lot of people would find that very hard to disagree with, but interestingly, Trevor Shalaber is now the third best player at the club. We've got Callum Hudson Odoi and Christensen as players you may already know. We've got returning low knees in the likes of Conor Gallagher, uh, Broya, Ampadu, and Billy Gilmore, who should hopefully give us a big edge. Just to run over a few of the players who are going to be quite interesting to keep an eye on in this rebuild, you've got Levi Colville, who in real life is out on loan at Huddersfield and having a fantastic year. He looks like he's got plenty of potential in this simulation. We've got Ian Matson as our only recognised left-sided fullback, so the chances are he's going to get a lot of game time. The goalkeeper situation is, of course, an interesting one. We don't have many goalkeepers homegrown at the club, so it looks like Nathan Baxter, currently on loan at Hull in real life and formerly of Accrington and Hull and Ross County in Yeovil, is going to be our goalkeeper for this year's season and probably going forward as well, unless we get a very good set of youth intake players. Um, Harvey Vale might be one to keep an eye on. Loftus-Cheek is going to get more of a chance in this side. And yeah, just get used to some of these names. I'm not sure who is going to be the ones that turn up. Jude Soonsuk bell here is another one with a lot of potential. But Armando Broya, I'm thinking, is going to be the guy to lead this club forward up front. Already a very nice player 
he must have been boosted in the winter update so hopefully we're getting a good talent there so what we're going to do now is we're going to simulate five seasons at the end of each season we'll take stock of where we are let me know if you like this kind of content what you think of it but i think it should be pretty interesting in terms of what we're aiming for with chelsea here i think with the kind of squad we're looking at right now in a premier league where teams are going to spend hundreds of millions of pounds if we can stay at the level that chelsea currently are so fighting in and around the top four, going fairly far in Champions Leagues and that kind of thing, that will be beyond a success. I would expect if we can stay a mid-table Premier League team with this kind of squad, I'd be pretty happy with that, occasionally challenging for a cup or two. But let's take stock of where we are after the first year and then maybe think about what we could do with this team. Um, chances are it's going to get better as it goes along, as the players develop. All these guys are going to get a lot more game time than they would have expected. So hopefully we'll see a lot of these guys break into the first team. I think the only other thing to really take note of is the tactics. I've just gone for a 4-2-3-1 Gagan press at this point and shifted some of the roles about. This might change as time goes on, but for now, um, this is what we're going to go with. If we do pick a best 11 without restriction, the game suggests it would be Nathan Baxter, Reese James, Christensen and Shalaba with Matson at left back, Gilmore, Gallagher, Loftus Cheek, Hudson Doy, Broya, and Mason Mount. I would suggest this team might be okay still. Reese James, Hudson Odoi, Mason Mount, they should still be players of real quality. And Connor Gallagher and Billy Gilmore, in theory, coming as one of the best players at their respective clubs that they're on loan at. Who knows what this team's going to do, but let's simulate a year ahead and see what happens with this side. Okay, here we are, and you might notice we're actually in 2023, which is two seasons into the future. I'd like to give you a special reason for that, but realistically, it's because I lost a save file for that first year. I've got COVID-19 right now, so bear with me. My brain is melting a little bit every now and then, but it was a 13th place finish for that Chelsea team. All academy products, most players under the age. I mean, what, loftus Cheat might have been our oldest player off the top of my head. I can't think of anyone older than that. So it's a very young side and it still managed to do better than a fair few Premier League teams. We've managed to stay up by about 11 points. So it was a tough season for Chelsea, but at least they're there and they're hanging around, which means their players have got time to develop a little bit more. The players we spoke about were the ones that got involved a little bit. No one really stood out too much. I think Trevor Shalaba by the end of the season had had a better season out of anyone. And Reese James, of course, was also doing pretty well. But things have turned around in our second year and this is where we'll hop back in now. I have got all the other save files so we can take it bit by bit and see how we did after each season. But here we are at the end of season number two and we miraculously have finished second in the Premier League. I don't understand how we've gone from 13th to second. I can only have thought maybe in that season where we finished 13th. Maybe Reese James was out injured for half a year, I don't know. I couldn't see any reason for it. I don't know why we've suddenly done so well, but we've done not just like scraped into the top four. We've done it by a pretty big point margin, to be honest. Man U, Tottenham, Arsenal, Leicester getting nowhere near and um, West Ham making it into fourth space. But us, only 12 points behind the league leaders in Liverpool is not a bad performance at all. We also finished runners up in the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. We got knocked out in the fourth round. But some of our players have really developed a lot and have been firing on multiple fronts. So firstly, let's have a look how our squad has developed and who has been playing super well. If we sort by average match ratings for the season, we can see Reese James has finished top 45 appearances, 16 assists and a crazy average match rating. He is so, so good in Football Manager, so, so good in real life. Reese James is the reason we're doing anything, it seems, in this simulation. He has done very well. Trevor Shalaba doing great too. He's developing quite nicely into a pretty good centre-back for a Premier League level. He's got consistency, he's got big matches. That is going to help us out a lot in this save. But the person that has surprised us quite a lot is Armando Broya. He played a fair bit in the first season for us, only scoring 11 goals. This year, he's at 16 goals in the league and 21 in all competitions, pretty much scoring a goal every other game. Physically, he's developed really nicely, the 21-year-old. He was classed as a wonder kid, uh, before he was 21 so it was nice to see he obviously does have that potential in this simulation mentally pretty strong too and then technically very good where we'd need him to be armando broya has done a very good job for us is now valued at around 70 to 80 million pounds we've got very lucky to have this man developing at the club and he will now be um, our go-to striker probably for the whole of this simulation because i don't see anyone in five years getting close to broya's level and billy gilmore is playing nicely he's now valued 
at 80 million pounds. I feel like Billy Gilmore has been around for ages. Anyone writing him off in his season at Norwich has got to remember that, I mean, two years on in this world, he's still only 21. So he's got a lot of time still. And he's really hit his form in this season, the most recent one. Seven goals and nine assists from midfield in that deep line playmaker role on defense, a 7.2 to average match rating. Some great attributes there. He is carrying us forward. Who else have we got that's played a significant amount of games and done well? Ruben Loftus-Cheek scoring 15 goals in 42 appearances. Mount, by the way, 16 goals, 18 assists. That's very nice from him. hudson Adoy scoring 14 times. Conor Gallagher also developing very nicely, looking like a top draw midfielder. A hard worker is exactly what we need in this midfield. And again, another consistent performer who's played a lot of games that we might not have thought about so far. 41 games here for Ian Matson. He's a left back who's had a loan to Charlton, but this year in real life is at Coventry. We've pulled him back and whilst he's not setting the world alight, he's doing a job for us in that left back spot. So thank you, Ian Matson, Nathan Baxter. He's been our first choice goalkeeper so far and he's developing pretty nicely. Hall's goalkeeper in real life. His contract, we will extend past this point. Don't worry about that. I have no intention of letting any of these players go on the free that can actually contribute to us. Um, anyone else interesting so far? We've got Harvey Vale, who has, of course, appeared a few times for Chelsea in cup competitions in real life. Wanted by Leicester, has played a fair few times, but hopefully we can tie him down as well and get away from his unhappiness. Um, I have been forcing a few players into the lineup to make sure they get some game time. And you can see that the tactic has shifted slightly to have an advanced playmaker on the right, a shadow striker, um, and that's pretty much everything, I think. I don't think I've changed too much more. But we are forcing Reese James, Gallagher, Gilmore, hudson Adoy, Broyer, and Mount into these starting positions just to make sure they're getting the game time in the best position possible and everyone else can kind of fill in, in and around when needed. Um, but yeah, that's everything so far. We're two seasons in. Um, I'm pretty impressed with how we've done. Are we going to be able to keep this up and maybe win a few trophies? I'm not so sure, but let's see how we do in season three. Okay, here we are, 2024, the end of our third season, and we've still managed to keep a top four spot. We're not too many points off where we were last year, and it's been another good year for some of our players, particularly Armando Broya, who has really had a standout season for us so far at Chelsea, three seasons in. He's hit 43 goals. He's obviously got a lot of potential since his winter update has boosted a few players. I can only imagine he would have been one of them. If you guys are liking this video up to this point, let us know, like the video or get in the comments and let us know if there's something else you'd like to see done differently um, in these type of videos. It's not usually the kind of content we make here on FM Scout, but if you enjoy it, let us know and we can make more of it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think we should, we've done pretty well so far. Fourth place spot for Chelsea in this season. Have we won anything else? Um, Carabao Cup knocked out in the semis. FA Cup knocked out in the semis as well. Champions League, we were knocked out in the first knockout round by Juventus. So that's not the best, but we can see Armando Broya is absolutely smashing it in the goal scoring charts across all competitions. How has he done it? Well, he is now developed into a top draw player, like physically. Wow. He's very like turned into one of the better strikers I've actually seen in Football Manager. He's doing that well. 30 goals in 38 appearances in the league alone. He's probably been carrying us all season. But let's have a look how we have developed in terms of how we are as a squad now. Um, it's still pretty much the same kind of balance in terms of who's good and who isn't good. Trevor Shalaba starting to fall down the pecking order as some of the young players get to the point where we can probably class them as better options. In terms of how our coaches view the players' abilities, Harvey Vale has now gone ahead of Billy Gilmore. Um, Levi Colville is up there with Andreas Christensen now, which is a big claim, but he is developing really nicely. Physically, that is very, very impressive from Levi Colville. As a centre-back at six foot two, left-footed, to have these kind of physical attributes, he's going to get an England cap, I'm sure of it. It'll be interesting to see which of these players do get England caps, like Will the fact that Nathan Baxter is playing constantly for Chelsea, will he get an England cap? I don't know. It is actually really interesting to see how Football Manager rates all these players here and that they actually clearly deem them good enough, at least in this tactic, which is not some kind of special overpowered tactic. I don't know enough to be able to make something like that. Um, it's just interesting to see that Football Manager says, yeah, you know what? You have enough to stay in the Premier League and do it quite well, um, staying up in the Champions League spots for a good distance. I'm going to say it again, but I do not expect anything like this to happen to Chelsea in real life. I don't think they'll capitulate in the way people might expect. They might not be able to spend 90 million on Lukaku and Havertz and whatever it might be, but they'll still be able to compete at a decent level. Um, I'm sure they will. They'll be an attractive prospect for many a buyer 
a club in the centre of London. Sure, the club will be run differently than what it would have been under Abramovich, but I don't expect any of the sanctions to result in this kind of stuff. And I should also say, as a Chelsea fan, if sanctions have to be put against Roman Abramovich for this kind of thing, then yeah, go ahead. You know, it has to be done. The whole situation in Ukraine is far more important than anything going on at a football club. And I hope you guys think as making this video on what could happen to Chelsea, like a lighthearted video, isn't as taken light at that situation. It's not. It's just... It's, it's a football manager video at the end of the day. I'm sure none of you came here for a political statement or anything like that. But we're just having a bit of fun to see what could happen if Chelsea had to rebuild with only homegrown players. And we're three seasons in now, no trophies, but we're doing okay. How can we do in season four and season five? And how will the players that we have develop at the club over time? Okay, fourth season now, and it's been a bit more of a tough one for Chelsea this time round. The, the goals have dried up a little bit from Broya, only about 10, 13 goals less, but it has caused a bit of a difference in terms of how the club's performed. We've now finished eighth in the Premier League. That could have been down to injuries or anything like that. Significantly less points than we've got before and joint on points with Leeds and Villa. If we'd been below them, we would have been in the bottom half. We got to the FA Cup final and we're runners up there, but we got knocked out of the Carabao Cup by Leicester. Champions League, how far did we go? Did we make it past the quarters? And um, we did, we beat Bayern Munich in the quarters, but lost in the semis to Atletico Madrid. But overall, not the best of seasons, but how have our players been developing before we get into this final year as Chelsea manager trying to do a academy-only rebuild where it looks like Levi Colville has suddenly rise to be the best player at the club with 43 appearances and um, he's now classed as a four-star player on the same level as Mount, James, Gallagher, Hudson-Odoi and Broya. If we are taking these star ratings as anything to go by of course which realistically we're not but just for the sake of this video it does make things a little bit easier but he has became he is a top draw center. Like physically, there isn't many center backs better than that in world football. And as we expected, he has now got some England caps and an England goal. So well done to Levi Colville. Broya is smashing it on the Albanian front as well. Is there anyone else with England call ups? Uh, Harvey Vale. Has he got one? No, but he has got under 21 caps. It took me a while to find it, but Trevor Shalaba is another player who has England caps. He has 21 caps for England, likely in this defensive midfield role, wanted by Arsenal currently. Um, nice to see that he's got some caps there. Ian Matson has been playing consistently for us, but hasn't even got a Dutch youth cap yet. And he is realistically the weak point in this team in that left back spot. Maybe we could have Colville playing out there with Shalaba and Christensen as the back two. Who knows, but Nathan Baxter, still no England youth caps or caps, but he is still there. As our first choice goalkeeper, doing a fairly good job for us. We haven't had too many uh, top draw youngsters come through in our youth intakes, but this is the best by far. He's just came through recently. He was 15 years old when we brought him in. He's now 16. He's wanted by a variety of clubs, came through in our youth intake, physically, mentally, and technically very, very strong for a 16 year old. And I'm sure he will pretty much be the future of this club's defence going forward, probably with Levi Colville. Um, but yeah, it's nice to see everyone developing quite nicely. The cream has certainly rose to the top in terms of some of these young players with the real quality ones coming through. Soon Sup Bell is now looking like a very good striker as well. Physically, very impressive, much like Broya. He is going to get us a lot of goals and is a very good backup to Armando Broya when we need him, um, who is looking like this, by the way, currently. One more look at him before we go into our final season. Valued at 100 million pounds now bro yeah but it's looking pretty good can we make it a good last season with a trophy if we do i think that'll be very successful i think overall it's already been pretty successful anyway to even do this well so let's see how we do after one more year as chelsea boss okay so here we are at the end of our fifth season i haven't mentioned this yet i don't think but just in case no one got the drift in these rebuild videos i don't take hands on management of the club the assistant manager does i just set the team and simulate to go for the season um, and obviously we're not making signings because that doesn't exist in this world we're just using youth academy products so hopefully no one's there going oh you know i'm probably just being a really good manager in the match i'm not one I'm, i'll be honest i'm not one and that's not the reason why we're doing very well but we have done very very well with us winning a english fa cup this year beating at leicester 2-0 in the final and getting very close to a premier league title within five points of title winners manchester united it was a great season for us which featured a lot of very nice results. I noticed when we were simulating a 6-0 win to Man City, and which was very impressive. Broya, Gallagher and Loftus-Cheek all getting two respectively. We beat Liverpool, we beat Manchester United. It's been a very good year for us in the Premier League and I'm very happy with how we've done overall. Considering Broya this year only hit 15 goals in the Premier League, 
he slowed down a lot and he wasn't injured either. So I don't know why that was, but it's good to see that even without him, we're not relying solely on one player. We've had a great season overall. And um, Broya did get 23 goals in all comps, but Mason Mount did well, as well as Billy Gilmore, Soonsup Bell added in with 10 goals as well. So I had checked this before I hit record for season five, but um, Nathan Baxter has actually made the English national team call up. He hasn't been given a game yet, but hopefully he will at some point. He's now 27 and has been playing out of his skin in his most recent year. And that has meant that Antonio Conte, the England manager, has called him up. So hopefully he will get his first cap at some point. Colville, Gallagher, James, Shalaba, all here. Mason Mount and hudson Adoy aren't in this squad. I don't know whether that was down to an injury when it got originally picked or whether they're just not in favour, but it's great to see that even Reese James here is the key player for England. So that is very nice to see. What would have been a lot easier in this simulation is if we had Tamori, Abraham, Lanty, Liveramento amongst a bunch of others that Chelsea have let go um, only in the last season or two alone. That would have been very nice to have in our team. But overall, we've done very well in all competitions to keep up with stuff. We've won an FA Cup. And whilst this isn't your typical rebuild video, because we didn't do the whole transfers and stuff, it was interesting to see how Chelsea might have shaped up if they weren't allowed to buy anyone and could only use their academy players, at least according to Football Manager, how it would have gone. Hopefully you guys did find this interesting. Is there any of these players that you think are going to have a bright future in real life? And um, what do you think will actually happen with Chelsea going forward with the sanctions? Anything like that, let us know. Like the video if you did enjoy, subscribe to the channel and feel free to check out my channel. Links in the description. Thank you everyone and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.